Welcome to the Seniors for Peace program this morning. If you can see these pictures of the peace pole, you will be seeing what I can see when I look out the door and what the big group of people that have gathered out here to be sharing in this with us. Come around sometime and take a look in person. Well, I am Marie Willoughby, chair of the Seniors for Peace uh, Committee here at Timbercrest. And other members of the steering committee right now are Dean Beery, Marilyn Groves, Gary Heisler, Ed Kreider, and Jan Rhodes. And we welcome you to this September Seniors for Peace program, which is usually on the fourth Thursday of the month, but we move it around somewhat. Seniors for Peace has no membership list. Everyone in the community, including the town, is welcome to any of the programs that are planned by the steering committee. So we want to thank you for making the effort to be here with us today. You're going to be hearing from a number of people, and it just happens that most of us are neighborhood residents, but not all of us. We have come either in person or on Channel 3 for a rededication of the Peace Poll outside here of our lovely chapel, and each reader will tell you who they are. After our short program of rededication, Brian Daniels is going to lead us in thinking about and sharing about some ideas using the theme, Peace at Home. If you are able, pick up a blue hymnal and turn to the litany in the back, 803. I'm going to be reading the leader part, and a few others out here will be uh, responding. So you can do that with the people lines if you're able. Here are the others that are helping at this location. Everett Shattuck. Go ahead, Dean. Dean Beery. Gary Heisler. We're going to read all together and then as a litany. O oh God, sovereign of the universe, without you nothing is true, nothing is just. In your word you reveal the way of love. By your spirit you make it possible. From greed and selfishness, from a society in which the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Compassionate God, deliver us from racial prejudice and religious intolerance, from a society which makes its weakest and most recent members into scapegoats. Compassionate God, deliver us. From indifference to the needs of other countries, from the delusion that you love any other nation less than you love us. Compassionate God, deliver us. From self-indulgence and indifference, from a society in which fidelity and responsibility have little place. Compassionate God, deliver us. Author of life, give us hearts set on the coming of your reign. Give us wise, just, and humble leaders. Give all who live in this land a will to live in peace through Jesus Christ, the one who is above all powers and dominions. Amen. Hello, I'm Marilyn Groves, and I'm the newest member on the Seniors for Peace Committee. I've been a member of the Church of the Brethren my whole life, but I really had no knowledge or involvement with the Peace Pool Project until now. So I did a little research about the history of Peace Pools. A man in Japan named Masakusi Goi lived from 1916 to 1980 and he dedicated his life to spreading the message, may peace prevail on earth. Mr. Goy was greatly affected by the destruction caused by World War II 
and the atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In 1955, in a moment of inspiration and deep prayer, the words, may peace prevail on earth, came to him as the message that needed to be delivered around the world. As he authored this message, a great number of people in Japan gathered in support of his vision and spread the peace message. Soon, peace polls inscribed with the peace message began to appear across the country of Japan. The peace poll project was first introduced in the United States with the opening of the World Peace Society. In, with offices in San Francisco and New York. This was in 1986, the United Nations International Year of Peace. Peace polls are now recognized as an international symbol of peace, and these monuments are world over, with 200,000 peace polls standing in nearly every country throughout the world. Peace poll makers um, are located in Maple City, Michigan, and there is a link on YouTube about the peace poll makers. The address is peacebubble.org. This is an older video made in 2008. Pinterest also has instructions on making peace polls. There are seven peace polls in the Timbercrest community on our campus. The languages, 17 of them, include Albanian, Arabic, Chinese, Dutch, English, German, Greek, Hausa, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Maori, Miami, Russian, Spanish, and Vietnamese. I just learned that these languages are included um, in, this, in six of the seven continents of the world. I hope you'll find these facts will enhance your understanding of the peace polls when you see them on campus. I'm Jan Rhodes, and I will be speaking for the Timbercrest Chapel uh, Peace Pool. This summer, this Peace Pool poll near Timbercrest Chapel and several other Peace Pools on our campus were refurbished by Charles Albert. Our great appreciation to Charles for this service. We are here today to rededicate the one here, to bring a picture of the peace poll to your mind. I am the Timbercrest peace poll. The languages I bear are Chinese, Japanese, Russian, and English. After years of service here, I have been repaired and renewed to continue my ministry. I am one of thousands of peace polls in this country and abroad. There are at least six other peace polls on the Timbercrest campus. In many languages, we call the world to peace in our time. I am a silent yet spoken prayer for peace. I have a long history of calling all the world to live in peace. I continually invite you to join me, to join us in praying to the God of the nations that our world may have peace now and forever. May it be so. My name is Gary Heisler, and next we're going to have a recording of the 
a song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Of course, in normal times, we would have a congregation where we would have folks here and we could sing it ourselves. But I found this rendition on YouTube and it's actually uh, presented by the Voices of Hope Children's Choir, which was actually recorded and filmed uh, last year so that children were not, the choir members were not able to be present at one location due to the pandemic. So each one has their own little uh, video and then they combine them all together to make a choir and they actually have pictures of 60 members uh, at one point uh, during the video uh, singing in this choir. It's located in the Los Angeles, California area. And certainly if you are interested in watching the video and you have a computer, you can look at YouTube and go to the youtube.com, search for Let There Be Peace on Earth and the Voices of Hope Children's Choir will appear, the video will appear there. On their website or on their YouTube site, they have the following statement. This is from the Children's, uh, or Voices of Hope Children's Choir. We pray for a safer world and a future where we can live in peace and harmony with one another. Taking a moment to honor those who came before us as we promise to uphold the values we believe in that all people are created equal and are precious children of God. Although we are physically apart, our hearts sing as one. We hope to change the world one song at a time.
I am Lois Shattuck, and I'll be reading O Day of Peace, number 408, in your hymnal if you'd like to follow along. O day of peace that dimly shines through all our hopes and prayers and dreams. Guide us to justice, truth, and love delivered from our selfish schemes. May swords of fate, hate fall from our hands, our hearts from envy find release, till by God's grace our warring world shall see Christ's promised reign of peace. Then shall the wolf dwell with the lamb, nor shall the fierce devour the small, as beasts and cattle calmly graze, a little child shall lead them all. Then enemies shall learn to love, all creatures find their true accord. The hope of peace shall be fulfilled, for all the earth will know the Lord. St. Francis was a man who knew how to have peace begin with him. And the peace prayer that he's written that I will read for you is one that will help us in our daily lives to have peaceful lives with those with whom we have contact. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. <clears throat> Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I'm Larry Foreman. I invite you to join us who are gathered here today as we dedicate our peace pole. As already indicated, it's located outside the entrance to the chapel. As we prepare for the prayer, I first would like to invite two or three of you who are in the back row or somewhere to go over to the peace pole right now and to lay your hands on it as we pray. We could not dedicate this poll for peace today without being mindful of the movement of peoples around the world, the immigrants that have gotten lost in our culture, world culture. As we prepare for the prayer, I invite you to listen to two affirmations from Torah. First. Leviticus 19, you must love your neighbor as yourself. That's an easy one. Then Leviticus 19, 33, 34. Any immigrant who lives with you must be treated as if they were one of your citizens. You must love them as yourself. We remember that God 
remembered his people in Egypt. So as we pray today, we affirm first our uni unity with all immigrants around the world as this peace pole is placed in the same earth on which they live and on which they seek for home, a place to be. I invite you to join me in prayer. God, as you have remembered your people Israel, so today we come and then ask you to remember first the immigrants from Afghanistan, those who've been caught for 20 years in the perils of war. We pray that you would remember the immigrants of Haiti, caught in earthquake, hurricane, without homes. We pray that you would remember the immigrants that we've often forgotten from Syria, the war that's been taking place there. We pray that you would remember the Nigerian Christians and Muslims who've been terrorized by Boko Haram. In the midst of our remembering the immigrants, Lord, we can't help but see the images of children crying out from the ground for help. We celebrate the many men and women around the world who are presenting themselves this day even to try to help with food, clothing, and reconciliation. As we dedicate this poll today that we call a peace poll, we indeed do pray May peace prevail on earth. I invite you at this time to join me in that prayer as we pray together, may peace prevail on earth. In the name of the one who is our peace, who's torn down the dividing wall of hostilities between groups, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now as we leave this time of dedication, and as you go about your continu continuing life in this community, you will from time to time see the six or so peace poles planted around the community. As you see those poles, I invite you to stop momentarily, receive the blessing that God gives us as a free gift in his son Jesus Christ, the gift of love, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. But when you stop, let the peace pole be a call to move toward whatever action you might be inspired to to help those who are immigrant in our world today. Through Jesus Christ we pray and let us go in that peace. Amen.